Hello there, beautiful, and welcome back to The Dark Alchemist. Today, I have a message to share with you from the expert. You are about to hatch. You are about to pack your eggshell wide open and break through into a whole new world, into a whole new universe. So today's pick a card reading is going to be about this process of expansion for you. Today's reading is part of my spiritual digital planner that I co-created together with Animal Spirits. If you're curious about it, you can check it out right there. And let me start off by sharing just a little bit about the egg before we hop into our pilots. The expert is one that shares a vision of being in a nurturing, warm environment where we can fertilize and grow into a new being before we are ready to hatch. So it speaks about an environment that is at the same time very sensitive because, you know, when you think about an egg, you have too much heat or you have too little heat uh, can really affect the way that the egg develops and the being inside of the egg develops, the embryo develops. So it speaks about a fickle kind of balance of environmental factors that contribute to the development. Much like that's the case for the egg, and you know, depending on which kind of egg it is, it needs different, different uh, circumstances in order to develop and thrive. And it is the same for us. When we are in a stage of cocooning and growing into the next version of ourselves or expanding in whatever way that we're going to look into in a moment, we are also very sensitive to the environment that we're in and we can shape our environments in such a way that it is most beneficial for us and for our growth and our expansion. So without further ado, we're going to take one deep breath, centering breath. Yeah, we're going to take one deep centering breath together. And then we will look at our piles for today. So with me, take a deep breath in, please. Let's take another one. And let's take a third one. All right. So we're going to pick based only on the cards today. For pile number one, we have the card of the hawk. For pile number two, we have the card of the starling. And for pile number three, we have the card of the blue jay. Now I am going to zoom in for you in a moment and give you about a minute meditation with some music. Take a couple more deep breaths and then see which pile or maybe piles you feel most drawn to. And then I will see you to look at your breakthrough story in your selected piles. You can find the timestamps down below.
If you felt drawn to the hall card, then welcome, welcome to your reading, my lovely pile number ones. And we're going to start this off by reading from the guidebook. I will say, actually, let me say one thing first. Uh, and it's that the expert was adamant with me choosing the bird deck as our starting point to sort of give you an image of the expanded version of who you will be. Just, you know, like... All right, <laughs> I think from the egg to the bird, that's a very clear message. I don't need to say more about that. So we have the hawk. I am hawk, the majestic and visionary. I am the eyes of the gods. I am the whole picture. I have keen sight, seeing everything from every angle. I can see how today shapes tomorrow and how my future steers today. I am advantage in strategy and will always come prepared. If I am circling overhead, it is because you are not yet aligned with your future. Your path is off balance, your motivations uncentered, and your higher mind misaligned. To be a visionary takes more than just seeing the path ahead. You must construct it, shape it, and ensure it spends far enough to complete your task. Does your current way of doing things support what you seek to accomplish? If not, change course and create a new path. I encourage you to take a look at what drives you. You are, percep you are perceptivity. You are the eyes of the universe. You are foresight. You are hawk. And let me... I feel called to let you know that I did um, do a reading where I channeled the Hulk message in January. I'm going to link it down below in the description box for you, because the Hulk was one of the or is one of the spirit guides of this planner and one of the spirits that wanted to work with us. So if you feel called specifically to the Hulk, you can hop over and check this reading out, because that reading was all about. Uh, which risk are you ready to take? Just leaving that there and let me like we're gonna tie this into the reading. Don't worry about it. Um, I have two cards to represent the energy of the egg and the energy of the expanded version of who you are. So the egg energy was the tiger or is the tiger and what is funny to me is when this one fell down to the floor and I thought I saw it for, for a split second. And when I saw the card for a split second, I thought it was the card of the ants uh, instead of the tiger. And the ants stand for feeling the heat in community. Uh, stands up for um, being surrounded by, by people who are attacking you and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I feel like the energy of the ants is an energy of before you went into the egg so before you were into before you went into this kind of safe container into this, this uh, withdrawing mode um, and with a tiger because we go from from this sense of community to a sense of solitude with a tiger because tigers are uh, solitary hunters and tigers are a representation of feminine energy they are a representation of ease and darkness and when I say ease and darkness I mean that they are uh, hunting at night so the night vision is incredibly clear in relationship to being in an egg you are essentially in a container where you are able to perceive certain things and perhaps hear some sounds of what's going on outside of yourself or outside of your safe container, but you are in a darker space. And it's not a... When I say darker space, I don't mean that it's a frightening space necessarily. It's more the energy of the womb, you know? It's an energy that is, is dark in the sense of it is a place of creation. It's a place of comfort. Think about... 
uh, laying in your bed at night and you're closing your eyes and you're like fully cuddling yourself or like cozying up underneath all of the blankets and close your eyes to go to sleep. That kind of feeling that is coming through with the tiger. So that's the kind of energy that you're in. So in, in one way you are in a comfort zone, in a, in a comfort zone of, of this cozy space, nurturing your feminine energy. And when I say feminine energy, it has nothing to do with gender. Feminine energy is the energy of yin. It's an energy of being receptive, of being very, very perceptive. Uh, you see here with the half moon that the third eye is highlighted. So it speaks about your intuition awakening to experience what is not seen with the physical eyes, but what can be seen with the third eye. So an expansion of becoming a seer to the unseen. And I mean, the hawk also spoke about being able to see every angle and every vision um, having this overview, right? So that's the current energy of what's happening inside of the egg for you. It's the development of this intuition and your receptivity. And then when you come out, you, we got the spider. And with the spider, I'm smiling because this is the card of creation. It's the card of creation. You are stepping into your full creator power that's your expansion because I mean listen when we look at the image we see that the spider here is at the center of the web and spiders are very sensitive creatures as well and when they are sitting in the middle of the web they are at the meeting point where all of these um, bigger lines of the spider web are connecting in and from that point, they are able to feel every single ripple on any any area of this web because everything connects back to the spider. So, you know, when there is a, an animal of prey, uh, let's say a fly or something that gets stuck somewhere here, because the spider is sitting in the center at the center core here, if the, the fly is going to move because it's going to try and escape the, the stickiness of the spider web, the spider is going to be able to feel that. And it's not only going to be able to feel that, but it's going to be able to locate it. So that speaks about developing a very, very keen sensitivity when it comes to energy and when it comes to your perception. We're talking about psychic perception and being able to, yeah, like perceive more than meets the eye. It could actually be that, I mean, the two senses that are highlighted the most here is clairvoyance, so being able to see, clear seeing, and clairsentient, clair, <laughs> clairsentience, being able to feel or perceive through feeling. And not only that, like I said, um, not only being able to feel, but also being able to accurately locate and understand the circumstances of the situation. That's this expansion where this ex expansion is, is bringing you. Let me have a look at the areas that are most affected from or by this expansion. And the first card that I have for you is purification. And we have the card of adventures. One thing I love about your reading right away is that you are Going from this space, like I said, we got the, the and card that was preceding this isolation stage, and you're going back into being part of a flock. But this time, when you look at this imagery here, you see that there are lots of parrots around, right? Lots of colorful, loud, loudspoken, <laughs> very expressive parrots are there, and you are one of them which speaks about you finding your or reconnecting with your soul tribe and of like-minded individuals coming together. 
to experience this world. I mean, adventure, what is an adventure but is being in a stage of experiencing the new and going out of your way to seek new experiences, to perceive new places. So this speaks about a huge change to your social group where more and more people that are actually aligned with you are coming together and not only aligned with you, but it's going to be people who have uh, similar abilities to tap into the unseen and to understand it at the same time. I'm being drawn back to the hawk card because the hawk card spoke about the importance of not only having the vision, but being able to translate that vision into tangible action steps that not only is like the next action step, but being able to foresee accurately the full journey of completion of creating whatever wants to be created. Right? I think it's said um, to find or to know about the action steps that span the whole journey. And you're going to be able to do that by your perception. At the same time, you got the support coming in, like this new flock coming in of them, like these people supporting you on taking these actions and going in the same direction. I mean, we got uh, the topic of abundance represented here as well with the lush nature and the water that's flowing. There is, an, there is a flow happening, whereas before it felt more like dry. I mean, we even have the rain happening here with the sunflower, the purification. I feel most redrawn to the sunflower. And again, like you see, she's not isolated here. There are so many other... Like she's standing in a field full of sunflowers. So again, we get this community aspect. But I do feel that this card of purification speaks about finally being in a stage or in a position where you can turn towards the sun. And feel the warmth of the sun supporting you, nurturing you, helping you grow. And it's like, while you were in the egg stage, you had to provide all of that for yourself. And by breaking free and expanding, you are realizing how much the entire universe and the unseen forces are actually there to support and nurture you. So you are not only going to be responsible for your own nurturing, but there you are going to wake up to a whole flock of... It's, it's going to be a mix of people, your environment... Uh, spirit guides, other deities, other energies just in general being there to support you. And that itself, this coming to this conclusion and understanding, not just me saying that, but being able to look at your life and different stages of your life and understanding how they all tie in together and, you know, how every single phase of your life was one step along this journey and yeah like seeing the bigger picture of how it ties together and why things needed to happen the way that they happened understanding that in itself is going to be purifying it's going to be very healing for your emotional state i feel like uh, it's going to shed light on some of the hardships that you have experienced and you're going to understand why you needed to go through these experiences and that's where this purification is coming from. It's also an opening to allowing others to support you more going forward and not feeling like you need to do it all on your own. Mm. 
Okay, I did pull a couple of cards to look at ways that you can support yourself through this expansion. So let's have a look there. These are cards. The first one is the Eight of Swords. Look at that. Look at all of that fighting energy. I find it interesting because it brings me back to the energy uh, that I picked up from the end, you know? Maybe I can just put this up here a bit. Yeah, I should have enough space for that. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles. Do you see how the colors from the Knight of Pentacles and the Purification, the Sunflowers, are matching? It's like the whole vibe of these cards are matching up. So the two messages that you have for supporting yourself through this expansion, let me start this off by looking at the Eight of Swords again because uh, you see that there is some kind of like energy circle that looks like it's binding the hands. But remember that the, that the swords are a representation of your mental state. So this speaks about um, having particular thought patterns or thought forms that are binding you in place that feel restrictive but notice that this is just like it's just an energy you know it's not a physical thing that is uh, trapping you or binding you but it's more the mind state that is making you believe that you are trapped or restricted in some way shape or form and part of your expansion is to allow yourself to break free from that first step would be to allow yourself to recognize that you are not your thoughts and it's just a thought it's not the reality it's just a thought it's just a thought it doesn't mean that it's true just because you're thinking it so to, to start learning how to separate yourself from from the thoughts and I find it interesting because it's underneath the tiger and Remember with the tiger, we spoke about the expansion of your intuition. When we're bringing these two together, there could be a possibility of heavily doubting your intuition, of doubting whether what you're experiencing is real, um, doubting whether or not that's possible, doubting your powers and doubting just your feelings and your perceptions in general, point blank. The work there would be to look into your past and see where you st where, when did you start to doubt your own perceptions? When did you start to doubt your own feelings? Who made you feel like you could not trust yourself? And that is the key point to breaking free from these thought forms and, and from that kind of voice in your mind because... The more you self-validate your feelings, trust your feelings, trust your perceptions, the stronger your intuition is going to grow. Because the thing is that listening to your intuition is such a subtle sense and it's very easy to doubt that. So when you are not trusting yourself and your perceptions fully, you will start or like you will naturally doubt your intuition. So the more self-trust you have, the easier it is to develop and grow your intuition, but also to start following your intuition and start following the steps. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of peace that comes with that aspect. I'll be right back. I think I just got a package. And the second aspect of you supporting yourself through this expansion is to become very grounded in your body. Ground your energy. Anything that you can do 
that helps you to be present in your body and present in the present moment is going to be very helpful for you. Because, I mean, the intuition is something that is happening uh, in the higher chakras, etc. It also goes back to what I spoke of, that uh, to feel these subtleties, you need to trust yourself, you need to trust your perception, but also you need to have a certain level of being grounded in order to fully experience your intuition and tap into that, particularly because we spoke about the sense, I mean, clairvoyance is one thing, but we spoke about the clairsentience. So that is about, that is, speaks about um, feeling the experiences in your body. To give you just one example, I am also a medium and I'm able to experience and connect with other spirits of all different kinds. And they're communicating often with me through clairaudience, but also through clairsentience. And I'm able to feel them physically in the room with me. And uh, they have different kinds of temperatures. And you know, if I move my hand like this, for example, I can locate it, there is a spot that feels warmer or that feels a bit colder. Uh, sometimes they feel a bit more electric and uh, it's difficult to describe, but there is a need to be grounded in your body in order to be able to perceive that. So that's the second the second uh, advice that you are being guided to, to ground yourself in your body, which coincidentally also helps with um, disconnecting from the mind because the more grounded you are in the body, the, the less caught up in the mind that you are, you know? All right. I do have, like, a, like you see, two more. And then I have a closing message for you. So we have ideal course of action. These are also still advice cards, by the way. And we have infinite blessings. This is speaking about two things. The first one is you are on the ideal course of action and you are, remember I also spoke about abundance here, you are definitely like dead on path to your infinite blessings and to have an expansion or I actually want to say explosion, explosion of abundance coming into your life and it's like, these are your spirit guides that are guiding you through this expansion and through this change. And the more that you are tapping into your power and into your intuition, grounding yourself, allowing yourself to trust your feelings, trust your perceptions and take step by step by step by step, the more blessings are going to like get sprinkled into your life by your spirit guides. That's a really beautiful image that they're giving me. Um, and with the ideal course of action, brings me back to the intuition. Your intuition is able to pick up on all possible timelines, uh, subconsciously of course, able to, to pick up on the best possible course of action for you, depending on where you want to go, depending on uh, what you want to do, who you want to be, how you want to live in this world. Your intuition knows the best and most perfect way from a to be for you. You don't need to figure out the best course of action with your logical lizard brain of the human mind. <laughs> Interesting phrasing. Um, you don't need to figure out by yourself. You can touch and touch into your intuition to allow your intuition to give you the next steps to take. So keyword here would be for you to follow these inspired ideas that you're getting and acting 
on your intuition before it necessarily makes sense or before you have the full picture of how everything ties in together. There is an element of surrender at play here as well, of trusting your intuition and following it before it makes sense. There is an act of surrendering present in that in general. But that's what you're being called to do. Follow your intuition, allow your intuition to take, uh, to give you the next step to take and then follow this ideal course of action to the castle or wherever else you want to go. And if you want to know how to do that, it can be as simple as sitting down for 5 or 15 minutes every single day, checking in with yourself and then saying, okay, what is my aligned action to take today? What uh, is the best step for me to take? And then starting just following that advice. And don't be surprised. Most of the time, these steps are not uh, as huge as, let's say, opening up a new business or... Um, learning a new skill necessarily it can be a lot smaller like today i need to go for a hike and uh, today i need to go have breakfast at that spot today i should um, do this particular kind of meditation or you know it's like all of these smaller things sometimes it's just you need to rest but all of these little steps are preparing yourself and your energy and your mind to be in the right place at the right time. I cannot begin to explain to you how many times my aligned action was to go for a walk and not listen to any music or whatever, just going for a walk and just, you know, allowing myself to enjoy the sights that are around, allowing myself to enjoy nature. There's so many times where on that walk I was starting to receive some kind of downloads about bigger actions to take or uh, other things to research or look into or whatever. Sometimes I also get ideas for creating videos or, you know, like sharing specific kinds of messages. And if I don't take that aligned action of just going for a walk when I receive it, I would not be in the receptive state to those other ideas. You catch my drift here, okay? So start following those little inspired ideas, inspired, inspired actions. Yeah. I have one last card that I want to pull on camera. I shuffled it already. So my beautiful expert, what closing message do you have for my pile number ones? One card, please. Did you not just hear me just say one card? <laughs> it doesn't matter. By the way, underneath the deck, we have flow. Go with the flow as water does down a river. Do not hurry. And I spoke about flow with that card. We've got time. Embrace the dewdrops of life before they disappear with the morning sun. We have renew. Nature continuously renews itself year after year. I love it because that speaks about the cycle of withdrawing and then, you know, nurturing yourself, allowing yourself to grow into, into something else and then going out and expanding again. It's, kind, it's a continuous cycle, like not all around nature, but it's also for us, we're going... We're going through those phases where we are withdrawing, restructuring ourselves, refining ourselves, and then, uh, you know, like expanding and going out there again. And we have teach, inspire others and let nature be your greatest teacher. All right. I mean, perhaps you will be a teacher of your intuition or teach intuition or how to reconnect with intuition. Perhaps you will teach that to others. I could see that. All right. My beautiful pile number ones. That's the reading that the expert and I have for you today. Please make sure to check out our additional resources for this month uh, connected to the expert and 
to this process of expansion. The first one is going to be an EFT tapping video to help you release what is holding you in place. The second one is going to be a 30 minute Usui Reiki treatment to prepare you on an energetic level for this expansion and flushing out what no longer serves and harmonizing your mind, body and soul. And the third one is a short Reiki infused affirmation track to help you create the new mindset of expanding and allowing yourself to grow into something new and not only growing into something new but also presenting yourself to the world in the new way. If any of those are out already, you can find them in the pinned comment down below. And with that said, have a beautiful rest of your day and I hope I see you soon. Bye. If you felt drawn to the wonderful number 33, the Starling card, then welcome, welcome to your reading, my lovely pal number twos. We are going to start this off by reading from the guidebook for a moment. And uh, I will say that the expert was very adamant about me using the bird deck as the first deck. Um, and the reason for that was that this is a representation of who you will be once you've hatched. So let that be in the back of your mind before I read from the guidebook for you. Got it. I am Starling, the relinquishing of the ego. I am the binding of society. I am the way the entire world affects you and the way you affect the entire world. I am unity. I am wholeness. You have reached a time when your work must be shared. Stop hoarding your gifts. Stop hiding your wisdom. What you learn is only as good as how you use it to teach others. I am tradition. I am your ability to bring others together in meaningful ways. It is time to express. It is time to blend yourself into the bigger picture. Being group-minded doesn't mean giving up personal power, but rather allowing that power to shine brighter. You are a gathering of like minds. You are the expansion of ideas. You are the catalyst. You are startling. And we will tie that into the rest of the reading. Don't you worry about that. Let me take two more cards. Um, I pulled one card to represent the energy of where you're at in the egg right now and i got one energy and that describes your expanded self once you've hatched so for the egg energy we got the hummingbird and for your expanded self we have the card of the cheetah first of all just looking at the imagery of these two cards, you see that we got two circles going on. We got two circles going on. We got one circle that's empty and we got one circle that's filled and that ripples outwards, which is actually kind of funny because the card of the hummingbird speaks about the capability of hummingbirds to remember each place where the nectar is. Not only do they remember where the nectar is, but they also remember the last time that they visited each flower and also how long it takes the flower to refill the nectar reservoir so that they can visit them, that place again. So this speaks about the need to nurture yourself and the need to, to not just nurture yourself, but the knowing of which activities, which places, which people, which things, which practices are nurturing for you 
and help you to bring you energy, but also at which times they bring you energy. Because, you know, there is such a thing if we just take uh, exercising, for example. There is a, 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 a moment where exercising is beneficial for you. There's also a moment where it becomes too much for you. Uh, but it also depends on the way that you feel every day in your body, which kind of exercise or activity will be most beneficial for you. Right? Something it will be something that may be a bit more strenuous, and sometimes it's something that's a bit more gentle and maybe more stretchy and flowy. So that's what this egg is teaching you at the present time to reevaluate where you draw your energy from, what gives you energy, what drains your energy, and how you can refill your own energy by yourself, which is actually very, very powerful. The hummingbird itself is a high energy bird. It's a bird that oh, I don't remember how many times they flap their wings per minute, but I remember it's an insane amount. Um, look it up yourself. <laughs> I'm too lazy right now. But these birds, because of, of the way that they move, they need to feed about every 15 minutes. They need to feed on some nectar about every 15 minutes or so. So, you know, it's like very, very frequent that they, that they um, are visiting their kind of nectar sources. I feel like you are learning how to master your own energy by yourself at the present time or while you are in this egg. You know, this like nurturing, fertilizing, growing, etc. is you becoming very, very intimate with your own energy and mastering your own energy in, in that way. And once you have done that, it's funny because actually the starting fits in perfectly, you are then able to go outside again and share share your light with the world because the card of the cheetah, uh, what we see in the picture here is actually a pretty accurate description of what this card represents. The cheetah speaks about someone who kind of carries the energy of the sun. Someone who, as soon as they enter the room, you notice them because of their energy. They shine so bright. It's someone who radiates that kind of energy outward, the kind of speed, the kind of agility. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do everything fast. It's just that you carry a particular kind of energy that people feel drawn to. The cheetah card also speaks about someone who, with all of this, like you have a lot of energy. It speaks about someone who has a lot of energy and can like run and run and run and run, but needs to be a little bit careful not to overdo it and not run out of steam, which, you know, plays back with a hummingbird. But coming back to the two circles where I say, okay, one here is empty and the other one is like coming from, from within and like shining outward. And I feel like you are at the present time learning how to master your own energy and cultivate your own energy. You know, like all of these intricacies about what drains me, what um, what supports me, what fills me up. Uh, if I feel like that in my body, uh, like these are the three actions that I could take that would fill me up and, you know, however long I need to do them. Very, very intricate because the amount of... How can I phrase that? I feel like you will be in a spotlight position after this expansion, after you've hatched, you've be, you will be in some kind of spotlight position. And because of that, if you don't master your energy first, it can be easy for others to throw you a little bit of balance or for others to maybe like take more from your energy than you would like to give, you know, it's a, 
it's like a strong lesson and boundaries that I'm feeling here. But because you have learned how to properly take care of your own energy to the outside world, it's going to look like you will never run out of steam. To the outside world, it's going to look like you're never actually stopping running. When that's not the case, okay, you're going to run, stop running plenty of times. It's just that you've learned when you need to take your pit stops and what kind of things you need to do uh, like every single day to get your nectar again, you know, to fill up your energy reserves. If we're combining that with the card of the starling, it spoke about that the time of isolation is coming to an end for you and about no, no longer hoarding your gifts was about stop hoarding your gifts, stop hoarding your wisdom is only as good as you going out and sharing it with others. And I mean, the starling is a bird that operates in huge flux. If you ever want to get mesmerized by looking at nature, you look up the a flock of starling and how they move because they look like um, actually, they remind me of the the swarms of fish in this the schools. That's the word, the schools of fish in the sea, and how you know um, sometimes you can have some dolphins or other other predators that are kind of like surrounding one school of fish and forming this kind of bait ball where they are bringing all of them together, and then you know like when one of them uh, swims through this school of fish trying to find one. Everything like dynamically moves and uh, because of this kind of like metallic sheen of, of the fish, it looks really uh, yeah, mesmerizing. And the starlings have that same quality, but in the sky while they're flying. And also this kind of dynamic movement is a representation of the kinds of people that you will draw towards yourself. Because, I mean, hummingbird, cheetah, both like very high energy animals that have a lot of agility, speed, and also a lot of grace as well. And I feel like perhaps beforehand, the kinds, kinds of people that were in your life couldn't fully keep up with you and your speed. And you, you tried to take them along to a certain extent. And it was actually draining you a lot because, you know, I mean, you need to feed yourself first. And that hasn't always been the case. And that was like a huge energy drain as well for you to try and take everybody else along. Because you like, you know, you have so much energy. So you're like, I can do it. If they can't do it, I can take them, them with me. But uh, somewhere along the way, you had that realization that you actually can't take everyone with you. And the people that are going to enter into your life or the, the people that are going to flock to you and your energy now are also going to be, I'm going to say, like high energy people. that can keep up with your speed, like a true flock. Like I said, look up the, the starling and the flocks of starlings and how they move. Mm, okay, I have two more cards that are going to describe the area of your life which is most affected by this expansion. And for you, we have inner peace. And we have <laughs> success. I love that. By the way, you have two wild cats. Just so you just so just so you notice, okay, you have two wild cats. You have the the cheetah there and you have the black panther here. And another bird actually. It's a cockatoo. I think that's the English word for it, right? Like a cockatoo. Right there, the corner. OK. 
Okay, the egg message. Okay, so the egg spirit is giving me <laughs> three messages for the inner peace card. The first one is that you will notice this change and this expansion most in yourself. I mean, by your inner peace, it's one thing, of course, but you will notice it by your ability to go with the flow. Because you drop what weighs you down and you learn to full-on nurture and care for your own energy, when you do get your ideas and you do have your wisdom to share, it will come from a place of being very much in flow with yourself. So if you are feeling withdrawn at the present time, you know you're still in this egg and there will be this internal kind of push that will start to pull on you to uh, share what you learn, to share your wisdom in one way or another. You're going to feel it. It's going to be that pull. And that pull, when you feel that, please follow that because that pull that you're feeling is the current that is letting you know, okay, it's time to, it's time to flow again. It's time to move forward. And um, again, we see like another right it's not just one fish but we got two fish here and they're like both flowing next to each other like in harmony with the current which brings me back to to the the, the flock again the second message that the expert wanted to share about the inner peace card is that you will feel very, very, actually I say very, very, but vastly different going forward and sharing what you know because you will no longer be in a position where you necessarily feel like you need to rush everything. There is simultaneously a speeding up and a slowing down happening. And let me explain. The speeding up that's going to happen for you is the speed at which things develop on the outside. Let me put it like this. It kind of feels like once you've hatched and your expansion is complete for this topic, it feels to me like you carry this light bulb within yourself, like a huge light bulb. And when this expansion is complete and you've hatched, that light bulb is going to turn on. Which is going to make you very visible and, you know, kind of like, like the moths to the flame. <laughs> Everyone is going to, like, come to you. Getting master, master manifester vibes. Just, yeah, attracting, attracting your clients like a magnet. Attracting your people like a magnet to yourself. And it's going to fundamentally change the way in which you move through the world, where it's going to be less focused on um, forcing certain things to happen. There is a lot of ease coming into, into your life. Uh, and that's why I said slowing down, because while there will be like a huge amount of people coming towards you, you don't have to work so hard to bring them to you, you know, because it's so in alignment with you, your energy, what you're here to do, that it's going to have a certain ease and a certain sense of effortlessness. And that's why I said it will feel like kind of, it will feel kind of like slowing down because you're not running at full speed after others, you know, you're not the one that's hunting them, so to speak, but it's an attraction. You're attracting them to you and I mean, they feel attracted in that sense to you because of your energy that shines outward and that they can feel. And that's where the slowing down comes in. At the same time, the slowing down or this feeling of slowing down is supported by these sweet moments in your day-to-day -day where you are focusing on bringing the nectar to your own energy that is supporting that, that feeling as well. The level of alignment that I can feel between your energy, your, your work, 
the teaching, the people that come to you and the nurturing practices that you're engaging in feels nothing short but magic to me. The way that I can, the, the way that I feel this energy, it feels very, 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 very peaceful, very blissful, very effortlessly flowing. Yeah, fundamental. Like you will be in awe. You will be in awe once that hits. You will be absolutely in awe. And others around you as well, by the way, others around you are going to notice. Um, I feel like one aspect that is going to set you apart in a big way is not just what you're teaching, but the way in which you do that. doesn't mean that you necessarily need to reinvent the wheel here, okay? That's not what I'm saying. It's just that the way in which you're taking care of yourself and moving through your, your business, etc. in general is something that people will take note of and see a difference between you and, and others. And it's purely based on these kinds of energy practices. And, and the way in which you cultivate and work with your own energy, that's going to make the biggest difference. And that's the very thing, actually, that you will infuse into your teachings. Yeah. And with success, I mean, need I say more? <laughs> this is bringing you to success. It's, um, it's the different way of working. Like I said, like a magnet you're attracting. And this will be your path to success. The foundation of, of your success. Whatever success means to you. And when I say huge amounts of people, you know, it's like huge amounts of people based on your standard and on what you uh, would like to create. Okay. If you don't want 500,000 people, people, people. <laughs> Well, see, if you don't want 500,000 peeper, <laughs> peepers to come, hopefully not peepers, but <laughs> if you don't want 500,000 uh, clients coming your way because of what you're teaching, you know, if you have some kind of course or whatever, then that's not going to happen for you, okay? So the like success and the magnitude that I'm describing is based on what feels like a huge amount of people to you. It's going to be something that you can absolutely handle. Also need to say that because you know you're not doing that alone. You are uh, co-creating it together with your flock of helpers that are coming into your life. But overall, it will be very successful. And it will be successful, I should also say, it will be very successful and sustainable in the long, for the long haul because of the way that you are taking care of yourself and the way that you are moving because when you are actually allowing yourself to go with the flow, that also means that while you are in business and while you are uh, learning more about yourself and expanding yourself, your business is changing alongside that. The current is always taking you to uh, a new destination, to new phases of yourself, new phases of your business. It gives very much um, business as a spiritual journey like having business as the catalyst for that. Yeah. Let me take a look at what you can do to support yourself. I have four cards here. The first card is the tower. I move that up. And then we have... <laughs> The card of the star. I want to draw your attention once more to the flowing water that's in this card. Because you know the star, it does speak about hope. It speaks about a need to stay hopeful in this process of, of creating our business, of creating the new, of expanding and, and like 
allowing yourself to believe that it's possible for you to create something that actually fully nurtures you. The second aspect about the stars speaks about self-care, which brings me back to the hummingbird. So your, your advice from the, from the um, expert is to take your self-care seriously and not just seriously, but like I said, invest in mastering and observing which kind of actions are making you feel which kind of way and what's the what's the combination between the little 10 minutes here 10 minutes there of whatever you want to do what what's your how can I phrase that it's like what's your magic formula so that you can feel your absolute best in yourself in your body in the way that you move what is your magic formula? And this magic formula of, of activities and self-care and all of the other stuff, like the way in which you, you nourish yourself, in the way you eat, uh, etc., sleep, sleeping habits, all of that. This magic formula is individual for each and every one of us. What works for me will not work for you. What works for you will not work for the next person. You know, there are, of course, some commonalities um, that we can say, like, get enough sleep, but even sleep and the way, like, when do you go to sleep, when do you wake up, you know, depends on your circadian rhythm, and that is more individual than, again, and also the way that in which you eat. There is not one way that, there's not one way of eating that is perfect for every single human body at the present time. So your call to find out exactly this magic formula for yourself and for you to be playful about it. You're not, uh, like you don't need to be like uh, crunched up and trying to find this formula and trying to find everything and figure everything out and get super frustrated when something's not working. There is a playfulness that the expert is calling you to. A playfulness of discovery and that's the key word here discovering what works for you in which way um, and then you can like fine-tune it more and more and more and the image that the expert is showing me now is someone fine-tuning a clock the inside of, of like the clockwork fine-tuning the clockwork so that everything is you know like everything is working together and can run as a whole and with a tower cards Allow things that are no longer working for you to fall to the wayside. Allow the dead things, allow the dead weight to fall out of your life. Sometimes it may be a bit more of an active process, but first and foremost, there needs to be an allowance from your space, uh, from, from your space, from your, I mean, maybe you need to declutter your space, but uh, not, but that can be one thing. And <laughs> allow this change. If you are so scared of, let's say, being alone, And holding on to people because of that. Remember the people that you try to carry with you uh, through your energy. If you're so terrified that there will never be someone else that can join you in your energy. If you're so scared that you're such an outlier that no one is able to, to handle the amount of energy that you have that's something that's really going to hold you back and that's something that's going to prevent this expansion from happening that's something that will point blank keep you in the x state indefinitely expansion is to a large degree something that we actively engage in. It's something that we actively agree upon. There is a need for change. 
that we feel. We withdraw to figure out what needs to change, how we can change it, how we can adjust, what kind of changes do we need to make, and we take those actions. When we take those actions, we are becoming new people. We are becoming changed versions of who we were, new versions of who we are and who, who we will become. And those changed versions are our expanded selves that are then ready to hatch. So if you keep holding on to the old in fear of something never replacing it, you will not expand. And it doesn't mean throwing everything out. It means that you need to be open to contemplate what's working in your life, what's not working, who is working in your life as well, and who's not. Which kind of company is supporting you, which one is not. And then seeing if you can have certain conversations, if certain things can change, can upgrade together with you, grow together with you, or not. And if not, there are many choices for you as well. Do you perhaps see them less, share a little less with them, or is it time to part ways in some, some way? It's not all black and white here. But you need to have a willingness to look at these spaces. Okay, that was a sterner message from the expert here. We have two more. We have the big picture. I love that. All right. Let's see, I got the big picture. And we have catch your breath. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we have been talking about this, catching your breath and finding the activities that restore you and your energy. I mean, basically for the entire reading. So that's like just further confirmation for that, catching your breath, allowing yourself to rest. We even have the moths that are present here that I, you know, saw that I saw being drawn to you as this light bulb. Um, <clears throat> and with a big picture here. The advice for you is to, when you are reevaluating these like activities, people, circumstances, all of these things in your life, when you are reevaluating all of them and you, you look, remember what I just spoke about with the tower card, reevaluate them from the standpoint, not of who you are now and who you were yesterday, but reevaluate all of this on the basis of who you want to grow into and who you want to become your, uh, I mean, some people call it higher self. Some people call it your next level self. Some people call it your ideal self, whatever you want to create next as the deepest yearning of your soul. Take that as your measurement as the kind of big picture and then look down at this little microcosmos that you've got going on in your life and see what because uh, we have the um i believe it's like crocus right is that the english word for it not too sure anyway the flowers that that are one of the first ones to bloom after the snow is start or like when the snow is starting to melt you know very early right now as i'm filming this it is the beginning of march and they are in full bloom at the present time you know so actually we are right on time and right on point but reevaluate all of these all of these aspects of your life and look at them from the perspective of do they feel like winter to me or do they feel like spring in the sense of does it is it something that feels like it's supporting the next thing that i want to create the next thing that i want to build or does it not and will it never basically Big picture, yeah, zooming out. This will also, by the way, help you a bit when you are um, 
getting a bit caught up in the emotions of it all. And when I say with the emotions of it all, I mean, you know, it's not easy to make these kinds of decisions when it comes to expanding and creating change. Like, that's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would would, uh, do that and everyone would be there in their best state at all times. But it's scary. It's not easy. I mean, when you're in the egg stage, it's like, this is the egg is all you know. Okay, this, this little container here is all you know. You have maybe some idea that something else is out there, but you're not really sure. And most people value their security and their immediate comfort more than a possible expanded and happier future, whatever that looks like for that person. So it's like an act of bravery of allowing yourself to go through this expansion and to go through this change. And I feel like you need to hear that, that you are brave and that you are courageous in doing that, even if no one else surrounding you is doing that. And not in the way that you are doing it either. You are very, very brave for doing that and choosing that option. Trust yourself there. Okay, I have one last card to pull for you. Uh, I shuffled this off camera and I just wanted to get a closing message. So lovely expert, please give me one closing message for my pile number twos. Thank you. You see, we got the card of strength. When your roots are deep, you need not fear the storm. This is your courage. This is your strength. The master of the energy is you mastering your roots, standing tall, grounding yourself very deeply, creating a network, a support network for yourself that supports you. And I mean, also roots are the very thing that trees use in order to retrieve nourishment from from the earth, all of the water, minerals, everything else is getting drawn up from the roots. What a beautiful closing message for your reading, my lovely pile number two, that fits perfectly. So if you want some more support on this journey of yours, I have three more offerings coming your way. The first one is an EFT tapping round or tapping session where I help you to release the emotions, thoughts, and sensations in your body that are no longer aligned with who you want to become. So I'm happy you release them. The second one is going to be a 30-minute Usui Reiki treatment, so some energy healing to harmonize your mind, body, and soul. And it's very nurturing, so I think it fits right into your reading as well. And the third one is going to be a short Reiki-infused affirmation track to help you build this new mindset of allowing yourself to expand and also expressing the new version of who you are when the time is right. So if any of those resources are out there, the Pico Cart reading is always first, just so you know. If any of those are out there, you can find them in the pinned comment down below. And that is all I have for you today. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I hope I see you soon. Bye. If you felt drawn to the lovely Blue Jay card, <laughs> this entire motto seems to be sans out, bans out. <laughs> welcome, welcome to your reading. We're going to start this off by uh, reading from the guidebook, and I do want to let you know that the expert was very adamant with me choosing the bird cards as a representation of the expanded version of who you are. So whenever you're hatched, whatever you're going to grow into, this is going to be a huge indicator for that. Right? Okay, so let's have a look here with a blue jay. I am blue jay, the advantage of a quick wit and intellect. I am the first one heard. I am the brightest one seen. I command attention and dive right in. I fear nothing and I take what I need. I am the crucial adaptation of a successful life. 
I have the discipline to master new skills. It is fine to learn new things, but dabbling in too many will keep you scattered. I am the need to follow through. I wear the crown of achievement. I am the proper use of knowledge. You may need to be louder to get what you want. You may have to outsmart the others, but do not be afraid to draw attention to yourself. Let the world know you are there and ready to take control. I am incomparable in self-certainty. I am the victory of taking by sheer will. Get out into the world and take what you have worked so hard for. You are presence. You are survival. You are bold ambition. You are Blue Jay. All right. We will tie this into the reading. Just as a, just so you know. <laughs> okay, so I pulled two cards. One represents the X stage, the energy of the X stage, the energy that you're that you're currently in and one represents the expanded version of who you are. So <laughs> for the egg stage we have the card of the oyster. I'm only laughing because the imagery of the oyster is kind of similar to that of the egg, is it not? Because when an oyster forms a pearl there is one grit of sand in there as an irritant and then you know with the the oyster slowly forms the pearl surrounding it, and whenever the pearl is ready, it's getting ejected. <laughs> like ejected, I'm gonna say it like that, you know what I mean? But it's kind of funny. I guess the difference would be that the oyster can open and close, because it's a muscle, right? It's like a mollusk, it's like a huge muscle inside of the oyster, so it can like open and close by sheer will, whereas when the egg, like once you're in the egg, you're in there. The only way out is when you fill a finished development and you can pack free, essentially. And your future energy is the card of the bear. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Let me take a moment. So one thing I find very fascinating is that you have the very concept of expansion present in both of these cards because the oyster is about... Uh, you know, like clamping up, it's about, um, you know, like all of the softness of the tissue inside the oyster, all of the vulnerability as well as the pearls of wisdom, all of the goodness is inside and it's like it's clamped up. Um, the outside is not allowed to take a peek inside, the outside is not allowed to be a part of that in any way, shape or form, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's just like it's clamped up, shut down from the outside world. And the bear in this deck speaks about the awakening of the bear after hibernation and going out into the world again. Yeah, like after hibernation uh, speaks about awakening or the process of awakening that's why I say like you literally have those two in your cards here. So that's the stage that you're in, like completely shut off to the outside world. You doing your own thing, not allowing anyone in really. Or, you know, maybe a select few, but I feel like not that many. Um... Like very solitary energy that I'm getting from here. And it's like it's solitary by will. It's almost like the image that I'm seeing. I don't know if you've ever seen an oyster or any kind of clam that wants to escape from some kind of predator because they will open up wide for a second and then uh, like shut, shut down really quickly. And it's like the, the speed at which they shut down, they produce sort of like a jet of, of water that's, ejected from from their opening and that leads to them leaping <laughs> like leaping through the water kind of it gives them like a push away uh, if you don't know what i mean look it up because that's that's kind of the the visual that i'm getting with that 
So even if there are people who want to connect with you, because I mean, we also got the water element. So we're speaking about like being emotionally shut down. So even if you have people or others that want to engage with you to some capacity, because you're chilling there by yourself and you're like open and they come too close, you're like, nah, and you withdraw immediately and fully eject yourself from the situation in whatever capacity that looks like. That's what I'm getting here. And then there is the opening happening. I mean, the Blue Jay also spoke about that. The Blue Jay spoke about being the, the first one heard and the brightest, brightest one seen and the determination of taking the place that you belong in. Stepping into your full energy, stepping into your full kind of power and just allowing the world to see all of that. which in a way is also a way of maturing. There is a, there's like a huge upgrade happening to your emotional identity, to your self-worth, to your self-confidence. When I say self-worth, you are inherently worthy. I'm not speaking about that. It's about you believing that you are. That's the upgrade. Believing that you are worthy of everything that you desire, believing that you, believing that you are worthy of the kind of dream job that you want to land, the kind of relationship that you want to have, uh, the kinds of friendship circle that you want to cultivate, the kind of place you want to live, the kind of lifestyle you want to live. That's the expansion. And then bit by bit, like you are taking your place in each of these areas in the way that that aligns with you. But this is predated by an upgrade in your self-beliefs and your self-confidence. And because you're working on that at the present time, that's why you're kind of shut down because you're like, okay, I'm in a very sensitive stage right now. If someone comes in and I'm reevaluating all of this, someone comes in, like there's almost this feeling of um, feeling a bit too raw at the present time of feeling like when someone comes in or if someone comes in and makes uh, like a slightly critical comment about something that you're working on, uh, there's a feeling of it would be game over for you. <laughs> I even started there. There is a feeling like it would be game over for me if that were to happen. So there is this like huge protective layer surrounding yourself, which can come off quite, quite harsh to others. I will say no shade on you. Okay. I've, um, I resonate with that. I've, I've also like at times that has been my energy before expanding. So I get that big time, but that's something that I'm, that I'm seeing where it's like, it's the last huge reshuffling and the last huge push. And it's like, when you go forward after this expansion, when you reach a point in your life again, where you feel like you need to withdraw, it's going to be very different. So I feel like this will be the last time that you are in this oyster stage with that kind of um, finality of closing yourself off. Which again, doesn't mean that you're never going to go into an expansion. I'm not saying that you absolutely will, but it's going to be different. You are going to communicate it differently. Also because you're going to cultivate a different kind of circle surrounding yourself. So, you know, the, you will no longer feel the need to kind of like hermetically seal yourself off against the outside world because the outside world is not going to feel as scary anymore. And the reason that it's not going to feel as scary anymore is because you trust yourself so much more than you ever have. And it's like, even if someone comes along and has some kind of critical comment about you and who you are, what you represent, what you're expressing, etc., it's not going to cut you anymore in the same way. You know, it's just going to be an opinion that someone else has on your life and that's it. So the emotional trigger point of these kinds of criticisms are going to be removed. And they're going to be removed because of your self-confidence, your self-belief. Because the thing is, or the difference between these two is, if you are to some degree unsure of yourself and you start taking your place or you start shining very bright, there will be people who are triggered by you shining your light very bright. It just, it is. It doesn't even matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter which kind of message you're spreading. 
in your personal life, in your public life. It doesn't matter. There will be people that are going to be triggered by you. The part of themselves that gets triggered by you is the part that knows that they would benefit from doing a similar evolution as you have and not wanting to. So it's easier to tear the person that is in this spotlight or that has this this light down. It's easier to do that than than like looking in the mirror and addressing uncomfortable things about themselves, you know, so they get triggered kind of by a mirror image that of you has nothing to do with you. But if you are someone who is in a stage of feeling unsure of yourself and you are on the receiving end of that kind of interaction, it's very, very easy to take it personally and it's very, very easy to allow those opinions to modify your your outlook, to modify your behavior, to modify your actions and your goals and dreams. There are so many different dreams that people have in the world, or I should say there are as many different dreams of creating a life that feels good to you as there are people in the world. And your version is never going to look like someone else's version. And when you allow yourself to live that, it's never going to look like someone else's version. There will always be variations within that. And that's fine. You don't need to change your way or change your vision or change change your dreams and goals to fit someone else's. Like I said, sans out, bans out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I mean it, sans out, bans out. <laughs> I know uh, from my YouTube analytics that I have a larger audience in the US and I know that, like saying sans out, bans out, like I love that phrasing in English. But what I'm laughing at is, um, not laughing at, I'm not laughing at you. What I'm laughing about, maybe that's the right phrasing, uh, is that... This kind of reminds me of going to the sauna because, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm living in Germany right now, but in general, I will say like Europe in general is a bit more relaxed when it comes to the physical body and like nudity, not necessarily being inherently sexual. It's just the body, uh, you know, like saunas are textile free, etc. And for some reason, like when I look at this dude, he's like reminding me of someone who uh, goes to a sauna and then comes outside of the sauna to take like a little cold dip and then it's like maybe it's at a lake maybe that sauna is at a lake is kind of what I'm envisioning and he's like coming from the sauna going into going into the lake and then just you know like standing there with like the the arms spread and just feeling very very free very very free in in, in his body and his expression and just feeling very at peace with himself that's kind of the image that I that I feel called to with this blue jay character here. Doesn't necessarily mean that you know you have to be uh, uh, naked in public. Not saying that if that's your vibe, that's your vibe. If it's not your vibe, that's not. It's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move on from this topic, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna move on from this topic. But that's what I'm seeing and, and with this bear and your expanded energy, there's this complete awakening. There's this complete and full expression of who you are and um yeah, like coming out of hibernation. I have two more cards. I said two, I pulled two and then the third one was bottom deck energy and I needed to pull that for you which are representations of the area of your life or the areas of your life that are most affected by this change. And we got illumination. And standstill, which I found really, really interesting. And I'm going to show you this card as well, because this is the card of miracles that was at the bottom of the deck. And for a moment, I'm going to put that here, but I'm going to put that underneath in a moment. 
this card speaks about things being foggy or feeling kind of foggy and receiving a lot of clarity in the process. So this speaks about, or brings me back to what I already spoke of about the self-belief, about the self-confidence. And self-belief is something that's happening in the mind. It is connected between emotions, certain memories and experiences that we've had in our life, as well as, yeah, like the emotion that kind of glues it all together and the challenging emotion that comes up in situations that remind us of these past experiences and bring them or the feeling of them in the present moment. And, you know, that's what's altering our behavior like as a very short, compact <laughs> phrasing on, on what's going on with this. And I feel like going through all of this and releasing all of this is going to bring you a lot of clarity on all of these ties that are causing you to clamp up that are causing you not to believe in yourself that are causing you to have the level of self-confidence that you're currently having the level of self-esteem that you're currently having wherever that's at and there's a lot of clarity a lot of illumination happening to your mind state and i do mean that quite literally where your mind state is lightening up throughout this process of being in the egg stage and expanding a lightening up of the mind. Uh, I believe in myself. I trust myself. I trust my intuition. It is safe for me to follow my intuition. It is safe for me to create the life that I want to build. It is safe for me to create, consciously create a life that feels true and authentic to me. It is safe for me to be seen. It is safe for me to be heard. It is safe for me to express myself. I am the creator of my life. I am the captain of my sea. I can allow myself to follow my dreams. I can create my dreams. I can turn my dreams into reality. That energy, those kinds of thought patterns could be or like that could be, but those kinds of thought patterns are going to be the grounding forces, the core of your mind state. From that core energy, all of your other thoughts are going to emerge. What does it mean? It means that from that core energy, that positive self-supportive kind of self-belief structure, all of the other thoughts that you're thinking are going to be beneficial for you and help you to create, sustain, support, nourish, whatever you want to create in your life. However, I spoke about the areas er earlier, whatever is in the, in the works in your mind, whatever you want to create, there will be the positive push for you to go for it. And with a standstill here, that's exactly it. You are ending the standstill. You've experienced a huge phase of standstill in like many different areas of your life where it always felt like you put energy into it and it was going a little bit and then it came to a screeching halt and you never understood why. And this is why, because you are you were motivated by by fear, you were motivated by um not shining too bright, not outshining others or whatever else. <clears throat> <clears throat> or whatever else is connected to that kind of topic for you. That was your motivator, but you see, you cannot create the, the life that you want by hiding away from the world, and you cannot create the kind of life that you want by not fully showing yourself. That's not how that works. Showing up authentically as yourself, regardless of whoever is around you in that way, you know, like, obviously be safe. But what I mean is being ridiculed or like someone, someone saying something, like I said in the beginning, being critical of you in some way, shape or form, um, let them, you know, it's a, it's a blow to your ego, but it's not a full on physical threat in that way. And that's why I said be safe. You you know the distinction. I don't have to tell you that. 
but learning the difference of when the mind is, is perceiving some kind of danger uh, to the ego versus being an actual danger. And it's like when you unlock your energy in this way and you allow yourself to go after this and to actually create it by changing your mind state for one thing, um, this standstill is coming to an end and there will be flow. We see the double rainbow here, the, the miracles. That's exactly it. It will feel like the miracles are just uh, pouring into your life one after another and it's because you freed up your energy. You allowed yourself to be free. I also will say that you, throughout this, you will develop a very keen sense of timing. Because I'm being drawn to, to the bird that's here, and uh, I don't know the name of this bird, but that kind of bird is hunting in such a way where he stands still for a long period of time, watching the surface of the water, or like watching through the water, through the surface, of course, watching the fish, and when, when one gets close enough to him, that's when he strikes. So you will develop throughout this as well, like an impeccable sense of timing for moving. And that's going to be the very thing that will even like kind of accelerate these miracles. You know, it's about um, if we go into, it doesn't even have to be a work area. I mean, it can be a work area, but it can even be personal relationships and like when to engage and when not to engage, etc. It's like you will have a crystal clear vision in your mind or like a crystal clear perception in your mind, a crystal clear knowing of when to stand still, when to wait things out, when to um, move forward, take any other action, perhaps change spots, and when to catch your prey. And I don't mean that you are um, taking advantage of others, okay? That's not what, I'm, what I mean. Um, think about it, for example, having a very juicy opportunity at work and uh, you fostering an idea for a while, but it's not time for, your, for you to present this idea. And you know you're waiting, you have it in the back of your mind, and then there's that one day and that one meeting where now you know the time is right to grab that juicy fish for you, and you present that opportunity or you present that idea, and immediately everyone falls for it, you get a raise, etc., and everything takes off. That's the kind of timing that I'm speaking of here. Yeah. Okay, let me pull, I'm going to put that down here. Let me pull uh, some cards to see how you can support yourself through this change. I say pull cards, but I already did. We have the three of pentacles. Move that up. And we have the card of the magician. Are you kidding me? Look at him. Look at them. Okay, let me move it up. We're going to look at these two in a moment. The message of this card is that everything you are doing now will pay off for you in the future. In combination with the oyster and the illumination and the kind of mindset that we spoke of, Allow yourself to be very detailed in the way that you are going about reprogramming your mind and changing your mind state. Because every single action, positive action that you're taking in the direction of creating a healthier mind and like healthier self-beliefs for yourself is going to pay off massively in the future. In the beginning, it's going to feel silly. In the beginning, you're like, I don't know if I really believe in all of this. I don't know if it's possible for me to change that. I have a lot of doubts surrounding that. But keep practicing and continuing to engage in the practices that you choose regardless. There will come a time where you're going to notice the change. But again, it's going to pay off massively in the future. It's what I spoke of when I, when I spoke about the core beliefs that are, uh, or the core thoughts that are at the core of your mind. That's the kind of energy and 
it's kind of funny because we have the balls here and that's kind of, um, I mean, there is pentacles, but it looks like spheres, right? Spheres of light. And that's kind of the, the image that I had in mind when I, when I was holding it like this. To give you some more practical advice for this mind state, um, I mean, it's no secret that I'm a huge proponent of EFT tapping to release uncomfortable feelings. Uh, particularly surrounding experiences that you've had in your life. That's the true power. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about that, I'm going to put a link to that in the description box for your pile as well. So you can read up on that a bit more. So that might be one avenue that you want to engage in, that you want to look at and explore to help you release the emotional attachments that you have to these past experiences that you've had. You know, because you didn't wake up one day and decided that you don't fully trust yourself or that you uh, don't have the highest self-esteem or the highest self-confidence. Certain things happened, certain, certain events happened in your life that uh, made you draw the conclusion that, you know, I can't be the, the most confident or I am not this, I am not this, I am instead this and this and this, all of these self-beliefs can really work with EFT to release that. At the same time, there are plenty of meditations that you can do, hypnosis meditations, to clear up limiting beliefs and to enhance self-confidence, bring healing to yourself. You can also listen to sleep affirmations on, let's say, I believe in myself, like self-belief, self-confidence, all, all of the good stuff. You can find many of them on YouTube so many different avenues that you can go in when it comes to addressing this therapy of course as well to help you understand the the um the dots that connect it all as well or any kind of coaching you know many different options that work for many different people in different ways that's what i want to say here so go and explore that and with the card of the magician It is the card of the shaman. And the message from this card is for you to drop every single doubt that you have about not being able to do what you want to do, not being able to achieve what you want to achieve or create what you want to create. Because the, the shaman or the magician, you see here, he mastered all the four elements, the pentacles, the wands, the cups, the swords mastered every single one of them and becomes the master manifester. You're an absolute powerhouse. But you've been cutting yourself off from that power by doubt doubting yourself a lot. Release your self-doubt. Very, very clear message from the expert here. Release all of your self-doubt. I mean, can go back already to what I spoke of. I have two more cards for you. <sighs> yes, I have the card of empowerment. I'm smiling so hard here. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> and we have, wow, trust your own understanding. Look at that. You see the owl mask? The mask of wisdom. Trust yourself. If you receive a dream of something that you want to create, something that you want to do, trust yourself and trust that you're receiving that kind of intuitive nudge, that kind of vision, because the highest timeline of your life is you actually living in that life, creating that life, living that way. You know, we don't get these kinds of uh, ideas or inspirations for creating a specific life that we want to live and then the outcome is that we are not able to achieve that you know like the universe is not that cruel we are receiving these kinds of ideas and inspirations to let us know that this is who we can be this is who we can grow into this is how we can live if we allow ourselves to 
it's a shift in perception as well. It's less about seeing that kind of vision and looking at how far away you are from there at the present time. It's more an inspiration of if you can, if you keep going and if you keep trusting yourself and, you know, building up more self-belief, more self-confidence. And it doesn't have to be super hard, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to force yourself to do that or uh, be rigid in the way then, or like in the approach that you're doing that. And I need to do that every day for one hour. It can be like five minutes every day, you know, like slow and steady. That's what I want to say here. You can do all of this slow and steady, but when you're doing that, this is what your life can turn into. This is how it can expand. This is how you can live. So changing your, changing your perspective on that from, uh, yeah, like I said, not looking at it and saying, oh my God, I'm so far away from that. That will never be me. Be very careful, by the way, when you are using phrasing of that will never be me. That's your indicator of a limiting self-belief. That will never be me. I could never do that. That's exactly the, the point that you can start writing down and you can start working on resolving that, those kinds of beliefs because, you know, maybe at the moment that's not where you are and maybe at the moment uh, it's not something that feels possible to you. But don't say never. You don't know who you're growing into. You don't know what's going to change. You don't know what kind of expansion is on the other side of, of resolving that belief. You don't know. So be open to the possibility of changing and you resolving these kinds of beliefs of your mind and starting bit by bit to change your life in that way. Because once you start resolving the self-doubt, once you start resolving the, the limiting beliefs, you know, it doesn't have to be like fully resolved. Even if you're just starting with it, a wonderful thing happens in your life because your behavior will start to adjust. You will start to do certain things or partake in certain activities that beforehand maybe you were, were a bit too shy to and now you're like, okay, let me just try it out. What's the harm in trying it out? I can just, I can just give it a go. I'm just going to try it out and see what happens. Self-empowerment. That is the self-empowerment. Allowing yourself to experience the new, allowing yourself to try things out and see what happens. And trust your own understanding. We spoke about that. I have one last card to pull, and I want to pull that on camera. Shuffled it already, and it is our closing message for you. My lovely expert, please give us a lovely closing message for my pile number threes. Wow, okay. <laughs> that one fell out immediately. What do we have here? Wow, look at that. Resilient, stay as strong as the evergreen tree. This ties back to what I spoke of about interacting with other people. Does it not just perfectly? That is a perfect way to end your reading today. So, if you would like some extra support on your journey, I have three additional resources coming your way. The first one is an EFT tapping session to help you release unwanted thoughts, feelings, etc. The second one is a 30-minute Usui Reiki treatment to harmonize your mind, body, and soul. It's a en Japanese energy healing. And the third one is, and I think this will be also very beneficial for you, a short Reiki-infused affirmation track to help you create the mindset of expansion, being your expanded self, and also allowing yourself to express that out loud to the world. So the pick a card reading always comes first. If any of the others are out already, you will find them in the pinned comment down below. And with that said, have a beautiful rest of your day, and I hope I see you soon again. Bye. <music>